we're here for a quick catch up with some of our Sydney managers uh, during this COVID-19 crisis. Uh, some of the restrictions have been reduced. We're still not working back in our office. We're still working from home. But uh, so I've invited a few people around for lunch today on a Friday afternoon to just have a catch up to try to build our culture and keep our team connected. Uh, so everyone got to meet the new office dog, Scupper, who's going to be joining us. Uh, in the office when we finally get back to work. We are in the process of moving to best practice office, so today's just a day to catch up, have a little bit of lunch. Uh, we usually have an off-site meeting every quarter. Uh, we haven't done that this quarter off-site. Uh, we're doing it uh, remotely, online, so we'll get through that meeting, get through all those tasks, but today was really just a day for the Sydney people to get together, the Sydney managers just to get together, say hello. Uh, we've been doing some podcasting and videos and live streams to link in from our lounge room. And um, so, welcome to uh, the lovely Narrabeen. Uh, welcome to my house and I hope you're all having a great time. Stay safe everybody. We'll see you soon. We live? Hey guys, I just thought I'd jump on and give you a quick rundown on what we covered yesterday in the live webinar that we ran for an hour on the winning formula for recruitment. Uh, we've been updating all of the guides on the bestpractice.biz website. So if you go to www.bestpractice.biz forward slash guides, you can pick up all that great information. So I want to welcome you back to the Kobe Summit audio experience. We're recording a podcast right now. So we thought we'd go live on LinkedIn, YouTube and Facebook all at the same time just to give you guys an insight. Welcome to my lounge room. Uh, we're here at home today. We've got the lovely fire on and uh, we're about to have a lunch meeting with some of our managers. Uh, we're still in restrictions and lockdown right now, so we're trying to make the most of the situation with our team. So we've just got a couple of managers coming in for a, a planning session and a, and a lunch catch up. So we're quickly jumping on to record a podcast for you guys. So welcome back to the Kobe Simmet audio experience. If you haven't uh, had, uh, had the opportunity to get onto your favorite podcasting platform and check out what we've been covering on the Kobe Simmet audio experience, I'd encourage you to do that. And what I wanted to do, do today is give you just a really simple introduction to what we've been unpacking as a best practice formula for recruitment. Now, I know that a lot of organisations that we've been working with, and I know that a lot of your organisations out there, have had to reduce uh, staff numbers, either stand down staff temporarily uh, and or lay off people. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the governments around the world are looking at, you know, rebuilding economies after the COVID-19 economic um, crisis, if you like, that we're right in the middle of right now. Um, and jobs and jobs growth is going to be a key focus for many organisations, uh, specifically, you know, with some government backing. So I know the government here where we are in Australia is very focused. It's their number one priority in terms of jobs growth. So what I wanted to do is just get on the front foot and help you guys with what we've unpacked as the winning formula for recruitment. Uh, of course, you can add to this. Uh, this is our recipe. Uh, we want to give it to you guys for free. You can get onto our website and download the 15 page booklet. Uh, you know, there's no friction. Just jump on and grab a copy. Uh, you, can, uh, you can download it, then you can um, put it into an editable format and edit it so that it's your best practices for recruitment in your organization. You know, it is important to point out that, you know, we're not all professional recruiters. Uh, you may not have the resources to hire professional recruiters uh, and to be doing recruitment as you grow out of this crisis. Um, so every organisation is going to grow from this point. Uh, that's the reality. Um, and, and change and either, you know, if you haven't pivoted already, start to pivot. So it's something that I want you guys to be aware of that you can get access to. That's our goal with our website is to be giving you guys the information, take the bottlenecks out of the process, take any blockages out. You can just jump on and get those templates and guides that you need to help you move forward. Of course, we've got the best practice talent business here. Uh, where we can help you with psychometric testing and we can obviously also help you with recruitment anywhere on the planet. We have full access to the LinkedIn database with a, an amazing product that we, uh, we access with LinkedIn. Uh, very grateful for LinkedIn support with what we're doing um, here at Best Practice and, uh, and allowing us the opportunity to go live uh, and, and, uh, and use that platform. So thanks to the guys at LinkedIn. Um, and uh, so let's get on with it. Uh, so if you go to bestpractice.biz forward slash guides, you can download a full copy of the guidebook, uh, which is there. It's, uh, the, the team have done a great job of looking at uh, making it look amazing. It's a flipping book. Uh, you can also download that. I just want to go through, actually, it's turned out, I'm looking at the contents page. It's 
ended up at 21 pages. We uploaded it last night. Um, we talked about it in the webinar yesterday. Uh, a couple of hundred people came online to watch that. And really uh, what I wanted to do today was really just go back over those principles, give you a better quality podcast experience from my living room. Um, and uh, and uh, let's get cozy. So sit back, uh, press pause if you need to, go and get yourself a lovely beverage, warm beverage. Um, it's it's uh, coming into winter time here in the Southern Hemisphere. I know it's going into uh, summertime in the Northern Hemisphere. So, so for those of you enjoying spring in the Northern Hemisphere, maybe a cool drink, uh, sit outside in the sunshine and, uh, and listen away. Okay, so what we've done is we've really looked back over the last 16 years of our business where we've made some amazing, you know, amazing uh, hires, if you like, or found some amazing people and worked with them on their career journey and or we've made some uh, absolutely enormous mistakes in terms of recruitment. And I take 100% responsibility for that. And I think that's where we start, you know, and, and starting with, you know, it, it's not, you know, I hear this question a lot around how do you find good people, um, you know, or how do you hire good people or there's no good people out there. It's, it's a two-way street, you know, it's, it's, there's two people at this party, you and your leadership team and the managers in all your organisation and then the people that come to join the organisation. So you have to take more than half of the responsibility. In fact, you have to take 100% of the responsibility because it is you that's doing the recruiting. It is you that's saying, yes, you can come and join the team. So really, if you are somebody who, who is involved in a management position, you, you have a team or you're starting to build a team or you work within a team, um, you know, you might be a key influencer or a change agent in the team or you're, you're a participant in a team, you know, or you're the ultimate decision maker of this, you, you do have to um, hold yourself accountable for this process. And what we've tried to do with this guide and these 10 steps that we go through in the guide um, is to really give you the, the, the steps to follow so that you can, you know, I guess, know a bit more information. What I have found in the past that um, if I've cut any of the corners and I'm, you know, I'm becoming more and more conscious about how we do um, our recruitment and doing conscious recruitment, if you like, um, and how we bring people on board and, and how we set them up for success, you know, it is really important to understand that when I've skipped any of these steps that we've mapped out in this best practice guide, that's when it's gone pear-shaped. And, and you do have to take that responsibility and say, look, I'm really sorry, you know, if, you, if you're offboarding somebody, um, you, you know, I'm really, really sorry, um, I brought you on board and we didn't do our due diligence properly and I apologise that it's gotten to this point where we're going to have to let you go. And, and whether that, you know, is firing somebody, making them redundant, you know, terminating their position um, or it's a casual that you're not giving them any more work. You know, it's a different story for a lot of organisations right now where you've just simply got no work and you've got no money to, to keep people on board. But as we grow into the future, um, as we come out of the bottom, hopefully, you know, I'm not quite sure at the bottom of the economic crisis just yet, but, um, but as we grow out of this point um, and, and we look to the future, we really want to be being very careful with our due diligence. And, and the recruitment process is due diligence. And you can operate on this principle, you know, it's a famous quote by Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, who's, a, who's, a, who's a guy that we follow here at Best Practice and have spent some time with. He's been mentoring us in a, in a program. And he says that, uh, you know, in the organisational development program we did with them, you know, hiring is guessing, firing is knowing. Hiring is guessing, firing is knowing. And so as you go through this um, guide, when you get yourself a copy of it, so please do grab yourself that free copy, um, you know, we go through what the winning formula, you know, uh, is, um, why it matters, how to get started. Um, and then really what I wanted to do for the rest of this sort of podcast and this time together uh, on this live stream is, is just talk about what those steps are. I'm not going to go into them to the level of detail that I did yesterday. This is just a quick um, post for you guys to follow um, on the YouTube channel. There's a one hour webinar. We did it 24 hours ago. We'll put the link in the descriptions. Um, maybe Vanessa, you could post the link for us in, um, in the live stream to yesterday's webinar on the YouTube channel. So you can go back and see that. Um, and that's a, that was a great conversation with Kelly John Woods, who runs the best practice talent business. Um, we just mapped out the steps, executive discussion, team SWOT analysis, um, you know, and, and in that executive discussion, really unpacking exactly what you want from the role. You know, the ultimate outputs of that executive discussion and team SWOT analysis is, well, what are our opportunities? What are the threats? What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? And you really want to, you don't want to hire to cover weaknesses in the business. You really want to put a whole bunch of players on the field who are really strong in the different respective areas that complement each other. And, you know, that, that it, you know, there, there's lots of books on recruitment. Um, great book, The Hard Thing About Hard Things. 
by Ben Horowitz. Uh, I've been reading the last couple of months and I've had as a resource the last couple of months. He talks about, you know, don't hire for weakness. You really want to hire for strength and you want that strength to really play into a specific number in the business that you want to improve. Like what on the, on the business dashboard, you know, from revenue to profit to cash flow to, you know, leads to customers to profitability, you know, to operations, to customer service, to net promoter score, to occupational health and safety statistics, environment statistics, cybersecurity, risk management, really want to look across that dashboard and see what numbers um, you want to be improving uh, and what parts of the business you want to be growing. So that executive discussion, team SWOT analysis, and then what number requires managing are really important discussions at the front end of the recruitment process before you even start building out a position description. Um, once you've got that information, you've got an understanding of what's happening strategically in the business and what's on the business plan, you can then have discussion about culture. Because in my view, when we skip the step, when we go straight to we need someone with very specific skills, competency and experience, and if we hire for that first and you don't have a cultural fit, you know, that person is going to come in and affect your culture. They're going to affect the team. They're going to affect the team dynamic. So what we do at Best Practice and where we've been most successful is to hire for culture and attitude and work ethic first, then build out skills and competency. And over time, people are going to get experience. So that's an important part of, you know, that discussion. Then you can establish the role. Uh, what we do at the end of those, the, those sort of those first five steps there is, um, is then say to everybody, what's on your wish list? And we've done that this week. You know, the case study this week is there's a new role that's about to be um, advertised. Uh, we're, we're right at the advertising stage. Um, once I jump off this podcast, I'll, I'll get on and have a look at that position description. We asked everybody in the team of people, and it wasn't a management team, it was just a team of people that are going to be working with this person, what's on your wish list for this new role? So we've had the cultural discussion, we've had the executive discussion, we've talked about the numbers we want to improve, we've talked about where we've got an area, like a weakness in the business and a threat, um, and what we want to do, and then we've said to everybody, write down what's on your wish list. So... Before we even go to market, the expectations of the, of the other team members and, and where they think you know, we need improvement has been set. By chance, it very closely mirrors, but it is subtly different. It's about, about 15 to 20% different to the previous position description. So it was really important for me not to bring out a pre, the previous position description and say, right, you know, how should we change this? We started with a fresh wish list. Then we went back to the old position description and had a look to see, you know, did we forget anything? Um, so that was, you know, really important in terms of the order of events. We didn't let that old position description, excuse me, um, bias, uh, bias our position um, and bias our thoughts going forward. So moving on, we can now, um, you know, we can say, okay, well, here's what the role looks like. Um, often I skip a step uh, where I'll go and talk to somebody who's available. You know, somebody starting to talk to us or in our ecosystem. I know of this scenario um, in, in uh, a, a business that's close to best practice um, at the moment where there is a situation where somebody is available because they've been recently been made redundant. They've, um, they're available, they're unemployed, they're close in terms of the network um, and they're prospecting for some work. And so, you know, that, those conversations, that verbal conversation is taking place. Um, I know that in the past when I have done that myself, it hasn't been successful because the first thing the person says is, well, you know, show me what the role looks like. Um, and it really, you know, that person's coming in, they haven't worked in the business, they, they want to see what the role looks like. Um, and even in the past where I've said to people, well, you know, you propose the role to me, they don't have the full context of the organization. So I would recommend against that process, I would be recommending that you as a team, you, you know, you and your advisors figure out what, what is best for the business first before you start engaging with somebody. Um, you can then start engaging with people. So, you know, next steps are, to, you know, finish off the position description, uh, be really clear on the number that you want to grow and develop in the business. Um, develop the position description and then you can start briefing whomever is going to be doing the recruitment. Now, if you're going to be doing the recruitment yourself, excellent. That's what this guide is for. This guide is a guide to help you understand what the whole process is and a guide to get you started on better due diligence on people as you grow your organization into the future. So if you're running a small to medium sized team and you need to you know, um, be across how the recruitment process happens, that's what this guide's for. Um, so you can brief whomever is going to be doing the recruitment, you, you know, or yourself. Um, you, if you're going to use an external recruiter like our team at Best Practice Talent, you can reach out to us at Best Practice Talent and, and they can assist you with that recruitment um, and that recruitment process. 
um, uh, Kelly John Woods and Joe Dixon doing great job there. Um, fantastic in terms of helping clients and they can, they can assist you with that process for anywhere in the world. Um, so it's, we do it all remote, you know, we can do it all remotely on Zoom. Uh, it doesn't need to be face-to-face, -face, uh, Zoom or Google Hangouts. Um, uh, we can do our psych testing, that's all cloud-based. So the whole process is cloud-based um, and, and is um, absolutely great in terms of helping you guys remotely. So um, if you're hearing this, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, we can, uh, we can give you a hand with, uh, with that process. Um, at least reach out to us and ask a question if you've got any. So we can go to market. I talked yesterday in the webinar about a whole bunch of different options and you know, three or four of the most recent people that have come on board at Best Practice have been found through job boards on Facebook or Facebook groups. Um, previously we've used Seek you know, and I was just on the phone to one of our long serving employees before we went online and went live and she was found through Seek. That's probably less trendy now. Um, we're seeing you know, lots of different job boards uh, coming up. My point I think that I wanna make here is we go into the mindset of where do these people hang out? Uh, we've recently had some success hiring out of graduate programs in universities because they are very specifically the people that we're looking at with qualifications you know, and drive and determination um, uh, in the area that we're looking to bring people on board. So we don't go to the same place to find different types of people. We try to figure out where those people hang out academically or, um, you know, or socially, and um, and so we go into those uh, into those zones. So depending on the role, obviously, uh, for an administrative coordinating type office based role, um, you know, you might go to some of the social circles or the lo local job boards. But if you're looking for something very technical and specific, go closer into the academic environments uh, where you might be able to find some of those people. Uh, certainly, LinkedIn is very good now in terms of being a um, a database that you can search. You can search skills on LinkedIn. You can search position titles on LinkedIn. You can search variations of position titles. You can filter geog geographically. Um, you know, obviously, to do the best style of search on LinkedIn, you need LinkedIn Pro. And I would encourage you to have that anyway, um, and and be paying for that extra subscription with LinkedIn to get the value. There's a huge amount of value in LinkedIn, and for the for the cost of the Pro subscription, it's cheap compared to the amount of value you can extract and the data mining that you can do when you're looking for people uh, on LinkedIn. So I do want you to consider doing that. So you can go to market in a number of different ways. Uh, you can obviously advertise roles on LinkedIn and that's, um, that's a great way to do that. Uh, then you can start your first round of, um, of conversations. So we start with phone calls. Uh, we'll, we'll do a you know, 15 to 20 minute phone call with candidates before we start first round interviews. We'll try and do a short list of maybe four or five uh, and then take maybe two or three candidates through to a second interview. Uh, so the first round of phone calls, really you're looking for, uh, you know, signs of, um, you know, values alignment, you're looking for, you know, uh, attitude, behavior, you know, uh, desire, um, and you, you know, we start to do an assessment around, do they get it, do they get the role, do they want the role, do they, you know, initially, do they have the capacity? So, um, jumping through this pretty quickly, we moved to psychometric testing after the first round. What the psychometric testing does is it gives us an unbiased review of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, skills, competencies, capacity, outgoing, you know, introvert, whatever that might be, depending on the role. The system that we use maps it against 200 different job descriptions. So you find a role that's very similar and most of the roles in your organization, you know, okay, they're, they're specifically customized for your organization, but two, there are 200 roles. And there's rarely is there a role that I can't find that there's something similar in the system. So we get the person to do a survey. It's got some artificial intelligence. So it, it, it basically, um, you know, it's progressive. It scales up and down in terms of um, the pace of the person doing the testing and how easily they're answering the questions. So it gets harder um, as, as the participant goes through and challenges them. So it's challenge-based testing and the challenge increases um, as they more efficiently and accurately answer questions to really understand where they sit in terms of the particular role you're gonna pair them against. Um, and so once we've got that psychometric testing report back, and it, it's a couple of hours for the participant to do that on a cloud-based platform online, uh, then that spits out areas of further investigation. And that's probably the most important part of this process is you've got an unbiased, non-subjective way to look at uh, the, the, the people that the recruits, the potential recruits that you're reviewing, the applicants for the role. Um, and so the system we use spits out second round interview questions and a list 
um, and put some scenarios for you to investigate. So I love that because then I don't have to write questions down. Um, and I, I, I often will go off on a tangent in a conversation in interviews um, and I don't let the, app, the, you know, the people that are applying for the role talk as much as I should. Uh, so that's helped me a lot. So if you're somebody like me who can talk underwater with a mouthful of marbles, um, it's something that I want you to consider um, doing that psych testing. Again, uh, as we talked about in the webinar yesterday, the psych testing has also been run on all of the employees at best practice, and I would encourage you to consider that. So if you're looking at doing performance reviews and looking at really structuring your teams through, through the remainder of this COVID-19 crisis and then into the future, it's a great performance planning tool. Uh, so we've run it against all of our existing people at best practice. There's about 25 or 30 reports that come out of the back of the system that we use, um, and I'd encourage you to have a look at that. Um, so it is something that, um, you know, team by team, you can do a full team analysis and work out how you can improve team dynamics and, and where, you can, um, where you can look at uh, development opportunities with each individual person who's already on your team. Um, Obviously, you can do the same thing with your new recruits, and we've got a couple of new recruits here at Best Practice. We're using that reports from that software on their development plans for their first three months at Best Practice. So at the end of the second interview process, um, you, you should be getting a feeling for a preference. Um, you're allowed to be subjective at this point in time. I like, don't like, because you've got lots of data, you've done your due diligence, and right at the end of the process, you can have the like, don't like, you know, conversation, um, and, and you know, you can, you can then have your choice, because you should have somebody shining through in terms of numbers. Now, reference checking really is a validation step. You know, you go into reference checking, please don't skip this step. The purpose of reference checking is... Most candidates um, who and applicants for roles are going to give you their favorite people who are going to say nice things. So when we go and do reference checks, the kinds of questions that you're asking, you're not doing a deeper dive into that person to find something wrong with them. You're asking questions about how you manage them. What support do they need? What growth opportunities? What would they like to work with so that you can work out whether you need to increase your management skills? And in a recent hire here at Best Practice, I've, had, I've identified that I need to change some of my management skill to give this person the best chance of success. I need to engage with that person a little bit more. I'm a very busy person. That person needs a little bit more quality time, but, they are, but then they will truly shine. So I need to invest in that person and give them a little bit more time than I normally would. Um, and I'm okay. I need to change. So everybody needs to change in terms of um, you know, looking at the teams growing because it is growing. It's not status quo. It's a new person, new, new team dynamic. Okay, so reference checks are going to usually say glowing things. So you're asking people questions about, you know, what do we need to make sure is in the management plan, the development plan, where do you think um, someone, you know, might have buckled under pressure that we can be aware of and look out for um, and, and give you the heads up. Because they have worked to work together in the past um, and it is an opportunity to, uh, you know, to sort of grow on your part from management perspective and then onwards. Okay, look... Um, you know, you can go through your contracts and you can make your offers and you can onboard people. The rest of this recruitment process really is a couple of simple things. The first thing is the one week induction. It's not a week one induction, it's a one week induction. And I just want to encourage people to understand that the benchmark for, you know, an office based role or any role, new person, full time in an organization is a one week induction. I don't want you to, I don't want to give you the impression that they get a 30 minute, indu 30 minute induction in week one. It's the one week induction. And in the guide, we've mapped out some of the things to consider to include in that induction. And then obviously the 30 day check-in. So you wanna either do fortnightly or 30 day check-ins um, as you start going through and that person's come on board. And then there's a five month review. And, and the five month review, review really for me is the person is a no. So, so it's gonna be a no. So at five months, you're gonna let the person go uh, unless you can't possibly live without them. And this is about, you know, in the past, you know, as a leader and a manager and somebody who's hired people, I've had these issues where, um, you know, I, I have just sort of, you know, tolerated it when it hasn't been ideal, but you really want to be mentally gearing yourself up to let that person go at that five month mark um, because you need to be thinking about, have you done the right thing from a development plans perspective? Have you done the right thing in terms of how you can support them and how, how can you grow into the future? But um, what you don't want to be doing is if it isn't working, you want to fail fast. And five months is a really critical point that you, you want to get to that milestone and say, actually, no, uh, we're not going to continue. Uh, the rest of the recruitment guide uh, that we've put together there is really, um, 
you know, pretty straightforward. There's obviously review and revise the hiring process as you go through it and keep improving. And I really just wanted to give you that, um, you know, that this jump on today and give you a, you know, a slower paced review as part of the podcast in terms of what you can do and what you can think about as you go, um, you know, into, into recruitment in, in, in the future. You know, there's two schools of thought, hire fast, fire fast, hire slow, fire slow, you know, all those sorts of things. But you really want to ask yourself the question, have, you know, as a lead manager and a leader, are you ready to, you know, mentor and develop and coach and groom people as they, uh, you know, as, as they come on board on the team? Because that is your role. Your role as the leader, manager, recruiting person is to serve your team. And so I really want you to think about, you know, are you being the best, you know, support and serving person that you can be? Because often, you know, it's, it's, there's two people in this relationship and, and, um, you know, I get that sometimes we need to break up with people from an employment perspective, but you've got to put everything into it and you've got to set people up for success and you've got to support them so that it, because it is a team, it's a team approach. So, um, you know, we, we look at that, you know, you know, do they get it? Do they want it? Do they have capacity? Um, you know, process, but we've got to give them the opportunities and we've got to support them through the process. So um, that's just really it in a nutshell. I didn't want to take too much of your time today. It's really just to jump on, give you an opportunity to get hold of that guide, get my verbal explanation of it uh, that we've got here in the podcast. Um, Join me here in my living room um, in front of the fire for the Kobe Simit audio experience and a live LinkedIn broadcast. So please take that opportunity to jump on bestpractice.biz. That's the website, www.bestpractice.biz or B-I-Z. And then you can go to the guides section. Uh, We're adding more guides all of the time. If there's a specific guide that you guys want me to check out, and uh, or, and or develop, uh, we're going to be building out the strate- a strategic planning guide over the next couple of weeks, so that you've got your, your your team strategic plan, and you can start looking at that quarterly cycle of review and improvement. Uh, we'll give you guys that shortly. Um, if you you know want to reach out to us at all, you can get us on all of our social platforms that we're running on bestpractice.biz. Uh, we're, obviously, you can comment below on LinkedIn. Uh, you can comment on YouTube. I see all of those comments. I read all of the comments. You can message me personally on LinkedIn at Kobe Simat. This has been the Kobe Simat Audio Experience. I hope you're enjoying the podcast. I hope you're enjoying everything that we're doing live. If there's a specific topic that you'd like me to talk about, go and do some research or talk about our experience in our business and what we've been doing to run our organization over the last 16 years, please reach out. And if we can help you in any way with business coaching and building your strategic planning, if we can help you with recruitment or if we can help you with your process improvement, process evaluation, uh, reach out to us here at Best Practice. I hope you have a great weekend uh, and I hope that you're all staying safe out there and getting through this COVID-19 crisis. And if you've got a question, please do not hesitate to reach out and see if I can help you with it. Thanks very much. If you don't see me out and about, As restrictions release, you'll definitely see me next time right here on Best Practice TV. Bye for now.